Hello everyone. In this video we're going to look at finding the slope of our cost function. In the last video we used this cost function. We had a super simple neural network with no inputs and one parameter b, so its prediction is always going to be whatever the value of b is. And we take the difference of that and a random target value and we just picked 4 in the last video. And we square that difference, so this is our squared error cost function. Now if we graph it you can see it's a parabola centered on 4. So when b is equal to 4, the cost is equal to 0. We can plot a point. The x-coordinate is b, so that's the horizontal location of the point starting from 0, 0 here. And the y-coordinate is the cost at b, so that's the vertical movement here. So I can vary b, and you can see that the further we are from our target value, the cost increases on either side. So if we're too low, if we're below, our target value of 4, you know, we're 1.33 right now, the cost is pretty high. And if we're above, we're 6.2, which is above 4, the cost is also high. Now, how do we change B to minimize the cost and bring it closer to our target value of 4? Well, it turns out that the slope of the cost function at B is exactly what we need. When B is too high, the slope is a positive number. And when B is too low, the slope is a negative number. So what we want to do is subtract a fraction of the slope from b, and no matter where b starts, that will push us directly towards the target, and the right amount as well. Because as b gets closer and closer to the target, the slope of the cost function approaches zero. So our updates become smaller and smaller until we end up sitting right at our target. Now, I have this little update here, and all this means is to update the value of b by subtracting a tenth of the slope of the cost function at b. So we can start b off at any random value, 6.48. And if I run this, we're going to subtract a tenth of 4.96 from 6.48, and that will be our new value of b. So if I click this, that's exactly what we just did there. And I can keep clicking, and you can see that it pushes b right to the target value and minimizes the cost. And if I click enough, you can see that b is equal to 4, and our slope is equal to 0. So we're going to be subtracting a tenth of 0, so we're going to be leaving the value of b alone. We've reached our target and minimized our cost. Now I can start b off lower than our target and apply these updates. And this time we're subtracting a tenth of a negative number, so really we're increasing b the right amount. And that pushes us right to the target again. So, it's pretty cool. Now the question is, how do I get this function that gives me the slope of my cost function at specific values of b? Well, we're going to answer that in this video, and we're going to see how to do it three ways. So the first way is we're going to find it numerically, then we'll derive it algebraically, and then we'll use some simple rules from calculus to find it calculusly. So let's start by finding it numerically. Okay, so let's find the slope of a function numerically. So we'll start with the definition of the slope, which is a rise over run. So what do these terms mean, rise over run? Well, we'll start with a random b. Now we're going to plot a new point, which is a step in the right direction by h. So h is a variable that I can change. It's, it's going to be our step size. we now have everything we need to define the slope of this function. The run, it's going to be the x-coordinate of this point minus the x-coordinate of this point. So it's b plus h minus b. And if we simplify that, that is just h. And the rise is going to be the change in the function for this step size. So that's going to be the y-coordinate of this point minus the y-coordinate of this point, or the cost at b plus h minus the cost at b. And so this is everything that we need to numerically approximate the slope of any function, and here we're using it to approximate the slope of our cost function. So if I rewrite this, I can calculate it, and for different values of b, you can see that the slope is changing. Now this approximation gets better the smaller the step size. You can see that right now b is at our target, so the slope should be zero, but because we've taken such a large step, our comparing point out here is very far away, and so we have this large vertical difference, which we shouldn't really have. So let's decrease h 
and you can see that the smaller h is, the better our approximation, and the slope approaches zero, which it should be when we're right in this basin. Now, I'm going to make the step size a little larger so we can compare the points. And all you have to think is that for the same horizontal change, h, we can just compare the vertical difference of the black and blue points. So right now the blue point is above the black point, so there's a positive vertical difference, and so our slope is positive. The further I push b, the further away the blue point gets from the black point, so our slope increases. And if I go over here, you can see that the vertical difference changes, and now the blue point is below the black point, and so our slope is negative, because the vertical difference is negative for the same horizontal difference of h. So let's bring h in a bit closer to improve our approximation. Now, the good thing about using this function to approximate the slope of a different function is it works for multiple functions automatically. So if I change the cost of b to be the sine of b, our approximation works just fine. You can see right here that the slope is 1 of the sine function. I'm going to make our step size a little bit bigger so you can see the two points. The vertical difference is positive for the same horizontal difference of 0.2, so the slope is a positive number right now. And if I continue along here, you see the vertical difference has changed, and so our slope is now a negative number. And at these peaks and valleys, the slope should approach zero because the two points are in line. So the vertical difference is zero over 0.2. So it's pretty cool. We can use it for sigmoid. And you can see the slope is zero out here because the points are in line. Right here, the slope is at a maximum because the difference is as great as it's going to be between the points because as we continue along, you can see they come back into vertical alignment and the slope goes back to zero. So that's how you numerically approximate the slope of any function. Now this isn't the best approximation, but it works for our purposes. The benefits of this are you don't have to change anything to approximate the slope of any function you're interested in. The detriment of this method is that it's an approximation, so the smaller h is, the better it, it gets, but it's still an approximation. And another detriment is that it's a bit computationally expensive. We have to calculate our cost twice. So let's see how we can be a bit more efficient by deriving the slope of our cost function next. We're going to start with the approximation of the slope we used a moment ago. But now, instead of evaluating the cost function at a specific b, we're just going to expand it, simplify, and see what we get. So to start, we'll expand this. Cost of b you can see is equal to b minus 4 squared. So we can make that substitution. Now for cost of b plus h, remember the input is b plus h, so we have to replace all occurrences up here with b plus h. And we get this, so we can make that substitution. Now let's expand this binomial. So b minus 4 squared is equal to b squared minus 2 times 4b plus 4 squared. I'm not going to simplify 2 times 4 and 4 squared just to make the math easier later. Now let's expand this left-hand side here. So b plus 4 minus 4 squared is equal to this huge monstrosity. So we'll just let you verify that on your own if you want to. Now we're going to rearrange these. Now I'm going to distribute this minus 1. And now we can rearrange some of these terms and see that we get some nice cancellation. So positive b squared minus b squared, that's 0. 4 squared minus 4 squared, that's 0. And minus 2 times 4b plus 2 times 4b, that's 0. So we get nice cancellations. We'll just rearrange here. Now, it looks like there's an h in each one of these terms, so we can factor out in h. And now we have h times something divided by h, so h over h is just 1, so we can simplify. And now we're going to move the h over to the right-hand side. And now it looks like we have a 2 in each of these terms, so we can factor out that 2. So now we're almost there, and if you remember, in our approximation, the smaller that h was, the better our approximation. So if we take the limit as h approaches 0, we can just drop or forget about this h term, and we get an actual equality now. It's no longer an approximation. And this is it. This is a formula for the slope of our cost function, which we derived. 
Now if you've noticed, the slope of the cost function looks really similar to the cost function itself. We'll see how to derive this very simply using calculus in a moment, but let's first verify that it works. So it's a function of b, and we'll graph our cost function again. And now we can pick a b, so I can pick any old b here, and look at the evaluation of this function. So we plug a b in, we get 2 times b minus 4, and that gives us this number here, 3.6. So it looks like when we're over here on the right of our target, the slope is positive, and it increases the further we get. When we're at the target, it looks like the slope is zero, so that's good. And when we're below the target, the slope is negative. So it looks like our function is correct. Okay, so now we have this slope function, but it was kind of a pain to derive. It was a lot of uh, algebra. So next, let's look at a rule from calculus that can help us find this extremely quickly. Okay, so let's learn a bit of calculus. So all we have to do is follow a simple pattern. If we start with the function f of x is equal to x squared, to find the derivative of this function, and this is how you write it, you can just say this is the derivative of f of x with respect to x. This is like the derivative operator on f of x. And this is the same as the slope of f of x as we change x. So to find this, all you do is start with the same expression, bring the exponent out in front and multiply by it, then decrease the original exponent by 1, and x to the first power is just x, and that's it. You have the derivative of x squared with respect to x is equal to 2x. Now this works for different powers, so we can try x to the fourth. All you do is start with the same expression, bring it out in front, decrease this one by 1, and that's it. So the derivative of x to the fourth with respect to x, the slope of x to the fourth is 4 times x to the third power. Now, in the general case, if you have x raised to some exponent, the derivative of that is going to be that exponent times x raised to that exponent minus 1. So this is just a general way to write this. And in calculus, this is called the power rule. So it's kind of like a simple formula you can follow to find the derivative of anything raised to a power. Now, just to reiterate, let's look at our cost function. We have something raised to a power, and we want to take the derivative of that with respect to that something. So immediately, you see a power, what pops into your mind, but the power rule. So we bring the exponent out in front, decrease this one by 1, and b minus 4 to the first power is just b minus 4, and that's it. You have your derivative of your cost function with respect to b. So that was a lot faster than doing all that algebra before. Okay, so that's it for this video. You saw three different ways to find the slope of our cost function. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do all this stuff yourself using Python so you can play around and experiment with it. And I just want to say thank you to all of you for the feedback. I've been getting really constructive criticism in the comments, and I've been trying to take that into account. I appreciate all the likes, any dislikes. You know, if, if this video wasn't helpful, let me know, and I'll try to fix it. And I really appreciate the people that are going to share this with their friends. I know there are a lot of videos out there about neural networks and deep learning, but I feel like they go very quickly and maybe are a bit too frightening for people not so mathematically inclined. And so I'm trying to make this series for those who are curious and want to get into it and figure out how to make it themselves and really know how it's working too. And just go really slowly along all these concepts so you're never surprised by anything and it all makes sense. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.